Since the time of Aristotle, about 350 BCE, it was believed that heavier objects should fall through the air at a faster rate than lighter objects. Somehow gravity should pull them down faster. But Galileo, who lived in the late 1500s, early 1600s, thought about this and thought it was a little strange. Suppose I dropped two heavy objects, two objects, one heavy and one light, and, you know, and they fell, fell at different rates. But if I put a very light string between them, suddenly they're now one object, though I don't know how the objects are meant to tell, and they're meant to fall at the same rate. How is this possible? So by pure leap reasoning, I, Galileo argued it can't be right. All objects must fall through the air at the same acceleration. Now you might argue, you know, you can see pieces of paper falling at a, sl at a slower rate than a rock, but that's probably due to air resistance, not so much the, due to the effect of gravity. So what Galileo set about to do, or at least it's not clear if he actually did this, he wrote about possibly testing his theory by climbing up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa and dropping different objects at different weights from it, and somehow maybe try to work out how to record their height as they change with time, and test the rate of acceleration. So, what Galileo was hoping to see, now I'm about to make up some numbers, nothing, nothing to do with actual real, real experiments here, but he's, maybe he was going to collect some data like the time of an object versus its height. And at the top, at the beginning of the time, he's going to start a stopwatch, whatever 1500 stopwatch would have been, and said, okay, this object, say, I know, let's just pretend the uh, leading tower piece is 100 feet high. At the very beginning, the object is 100 feet. And maybe half a second later, if he could somehow record that, it's maybe just fallen four feet down. And then at one second, its height is now, say, I know, 84 feet. At 1.5, it's something like 64. At 2.0 seconds, it's 36 feet high. And it hits the ground at 2.5 second mark. Zero height. So he's going to possibly collect some data like this. So, what was he hoping to see from this data? Well, velocity is the rate of change of height. So he's hoping that, you know, that if I took the first differences, the change of height over time, that's going to give me a set of numbers related to velocity. Well, if I do that here, 100 down to 96 is a change of negative 4. 96 down to 84 is a change of negative 12. Uh, negative 20, negative, uh, uh, negative uh, 28 and negative 36. There we go. And acceleration, Galileo realized, is rate of change of velocity. Those are the changes of these velocities. So the second differences in this data value should be connected to acceleration. And he was arguing acceleration should be constant. So what would we hope to see from this data? If I went to the second differences, I should get something that's constant. Negative 4 to negative 12 is negative 8. Negative 12 to negative 20 is negative 8. Negative 8 and negative 8. So if Galileo were to do this experiment, again, no evidence he actually did this, he was probably hoping to get some data like this and show double differences are constant. Now what we've learned in this course, that when you've got double differences, then that means the formula is probably related to n squareds, n's, and 1's. So I didn't call it n in this data, I call it t is the variable, t is time. So he expected that the height of an object as it changes at force with the air is given by some combination of a t squared, like an n squared, and some combination of a t, and some combination of a 1. That is, he argued motion through the air under ideal circumstances, ignoring wind and drag and all that sort of stuff, should be given by a formula of the form a t squared plus b t plus c. Projectile motion is what people call quadratic. A formula like this is called quadratic motion. And in fact, if you took a, say, a cannon, how do I draw a cannon? Okay, we draw a cannon, and threw an object, a cannonball out from it, its height should change via this formula, even though it's moving at a constant velocity over to the right. So its height changes at some formula, and we all know it's some sort of curve like this. So constant movement to the right, I guess that's to the left on your screen, um, gives me uh, a height varying by a formula like this. So projectile motion gives me shapes of graphs given by what they called quadratic formulas. This is why people are fascinated by quadratic formulas way from the get-go. This is why people make students study quadratic formulas in an algebra class. So now we know why we're going to do quadratic formulas. But before we carry on, Galileo had another idea, and he wasn't quite right about this one. And we now have enough mathematics to fix that. So let's go to the next lesson, after you work through the details of this, the text of this lesson, and see an error Galileo kind of made. All right, more in a moment.